The book of Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to start at verse 19, and it reads, Lay, so I get Matthew 6 and 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to God, all loyum, by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, I want to say double honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, who teach and do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim, across the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. I say shalom to the Akim and the Akwat, out there listening and learning. Lord, willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. You know, and other nations appearing like the other nations with subscribe to the truth to you. I say shalom. So brother Yahweh Sabah the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant, coming at you with no lesson through the spirit and through the power of and through the power of Yahweh Shimia Shah. I was watching um this economist earlier today. Uh I me real quick. I'm gonna skip it if it takes too long, but um Sale Daddy won. So he went into these major banks are now closing thousands of branches and removing ATMs across America. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this copyright disclaimer because I clipped. I was going to trade this card from Carvana for a brand new. We play this copyright disclaimer because I clipped um, a portion of this video and I'm just using this strictly to teach from the scriptures because, you know, my job is to, you know, basically, um, you know, um, sift through, you know, the news of today and the current events and line them up with scripture. Well, it's not only my job, but my fellow brethren, you know, the watchmen that's on the walls, you know, um, uh, 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 the city with no walls. <laughs> but um, saying that to say this, um, so here's the um, snippet. Wells Fargo slapped with another big fine, overcharging customers. This is like what, number four for them in a year? I don't know. It's getting kind of high. Wells Fargo and Bank of America. Isn't a Bank of America a winner in this realm as well? Wells Fargo slapped with another big fine for overcharging customers. Bank charged $26.8 million in excessive fees to more than 10,900 investment advisory accounts. So... <laughs> Uh, what was it? Thirty-five million? I think they got hit with thirty-five million. Yeah, thirty-five million, fine. And of course, this isn't the first time. Like I said, we're seeing a lot of these banks trying to get by by charging extra fees, making fake accounts, whatever they can do to make it by, folks. And of course, Wells Fargo in the in the news here, uh, closing branches, uh, overcharging customers. <laughs> In hot water with SEC, uh, they're doing good. They're doing good. And of course, also, they're they're the picture example for maybe the next bank that's going to be merged on. I like this. This is interesting. I'll show you that in a minute as well. Bank on it. Bank of America executive insists customers will find new locations after 1,144 U.S. bank branches abruptly close. Like there's no pattern to this. There's no There's no pattern. Just ignore Australia, where they literally had a bank close all of the east side of Australia's branches. You're going to have to drive 4,000 kilometers to get to a, a branch for your bank. Okay, I thought that was the snippet. So pretty much, um, and that's the spirit because I did a video on, on that as far as the 1,144 um, banks close it because, you know, the brothers in this truth, we know the spiritual connotation and significance and how that's a spiritual number 144 so um you know like this individual said um basically it's a pattern because basically you're going to go from uh, a, a a physical currency to a digital currency that's why you got all these brick and mortar banks closing um and that's what's the inspiration for this video so uh that's why you shouldn't be putting your trust in these uncertain riches. Matter of fact, let me get that in the book of um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 10. And it reads, for the love of money is the root of all evil. 
I'm going to start up 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Because the scriptures talk about getting your daily bread. You know, uh, scriptures talk about those that are rich in this world have received their consolation. You know, the true riches is his wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You know, in the day of trouble, the day of um, evil, you know, you're not going to have physical currency. You know, I've watched enough shows where you see shows like Walking Dead and... Um, What's that show with a movie with Will Smith? Um, damn, when it was the vampires. Um, I can't think of uh, the name of that shit. But it was him and the girl and the dog. And, you know, long story short, though, um, it's based on the movie, The Omega Man. I remember the elders went into that, you know. Um, and, um, it was Dr. Neville. But um, long story short, remember, they found money, but the money was worthless. What makes money... Um, of a value you know it's because of the simple fact that literally you have you can buy and sell and trade with it but you know the you know it would real a substance that's real money is like gold because you can do multiple or multitude of things with it you know but saying that to say this you know um you know you know having what you basically need to survive is, is you should be content with that and you know it, that's why the scriptures talk about um, the rich man. It was hard for the rich man to enter into heaven. You know, he walked away sorrowful because he didn't want to give up his riches. And the more things you have to this world, is the harder you gonna or people are gonna want to hold on harder to. That's why right now is the time to be basically letting go of certain things. It says, but they that will be rich, and that's the spirit, because I forgot that scripture. That verse was right there. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and the snare and into many foolish and hateful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some covet after they have erred from the faith and pissed themselves through with many sorrows skipping verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living power who giveth us richly all things to enjoy and I read that scripture in 17, uncertain riches, because this money is uncertain right now. You know what I mean? Things of true value like gold, silver, land, cattle, you know, they don't even want you to own. They want you to basically believe in a monetary system, which I was listening to the elder Yashwamba from Dallas going to. He brought it out how that's all based on witchcraft. And I was aware of all that, not being prideful. I, I used to try to tell brothers about this book. And I know brothers be you know, the Lord got the spirit on them to be into what they were into. But I was already familiar with this script, um, with this information. You know, you call America ancient Babylon because they take up a lot of the practices of ancient Babylon. When you go into credit, that is all witchcraft. They're giving you something for nothing. Because <laughs> credit is like, like a bank. A bank doesn't have, they can say that they got a million dollars on the books, but they may only have 100000 in physical cash. But they can loan up to that million. That's witchcraft. So they'll give you something that is just a number on a computer, but then you literally got a real asset like a home that you may own, and then you default on that loan, and now they own your home. That's witchcraft. So, you know, you shouldn't be trusting in these riches. Um, and there's enough scriptures that go into, you know, a rich man. I'm going to bring a few out and try and rapid fire them because I'm at the job and I'm running late. So this is Proverbs chapter 23. In verse 5, and it says, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You know, money comes and goes. And especially nowadays, you know what I mean? Especially nowadays, you got individuals. You know, a lot of people are upset and frustrated because you got individuals that I know my, my Eve, her mother basically retired and then had to go back to work because living above and beyond their means you got a lot of people working six days out the week doing all this overtime you know and i refuse to do that you know what i mean i am content with my daily bread you know I, of course everybody like to have nice things and whatnot but i don't look at things the same way you know the lord basically humbled me to the point where i was homeless and i'm grateful for that now at the time i couldn't realize it you know because it's a bitter feeling you know i remember brother made a statement just imagine going through all these curses that's a bitter feeling but can you really be bitter when you put yourself in these situations it's like when you discipline your child you might hit your child with, well you did that to yourself though you know what i mean and that's just like with you know when i was homeless like i understand why the lord made me homeless because i have an issue with pride and i can admit it i pray the lord help me before it destroy me you know but at the end of the day 
I don't look at the shit like the way I used to. Like I couldn't wear a, a, a pair of, 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 of generic shoes. I had to have name brand shit. And now I don't even buy clothes. So I know brothers like probably see it and don't say nothing about it. But like, because I don't give a fuck about that shit no more. As long as it clean and don't stink. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck about what somebody else's opinion is from a brother. Well, a brother ain't going to really have opinion. Well, that, that's not true. All, all of us have opinions. But what I'm saying is a brother accepts you for who you are. That's what, you know, that's what a brother does. So what I'm saying is, though, no, I, I don't look at it, you know what I mean? I'd rather, you know, um, make sure my children have, you know, you know, I can go without. That's what my mindset is. And I'll have something, like, I'll look at it like I, I, I'm in the spirit of Apostle Tahar. I, I took it as advice, so put it like that, as well as some other brothers have. So I'm going to leave it at that. But um, money comes and goes, and especially nowadays because of this inflation, Revelation 6 and 6. I got another script. Oh, I mean to do that. Uh, let me see. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 27. And verse 24, and it reads, For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. So again, money comes and goes. Now, these devils, they've had so much money. You know, but look at what they've created. You know, you got the Oppenheimers. They created nuclear energy. You know what I mean? Like, that's something that powers, you know what I mean? That's unlimited riches. Or the, the fucking Rockefellers, those devils basically patented in this oil, you know, a universal oil. They use oil for this oil. I work at a job, we use a lot of oil. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they use the oil to power the car. You don't need oil to power a car, but, you know, that's how much of a stranglehold they have on it. And when individuals try to bring out vehicles that could run on water or or vegetable oil or different things like that these individuals suddenly or mysteriously end up disappearing that's power you know that's why the lord yahweh um yahweh shah mashiach our big brother is gonna come back and fuck this devil up psalms 39 This is Psalms 39 and verse 6. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heap up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. You know, because at the end of the day, again, going back to Matthew 6, where it says, um, lay up not your treasures on heaven, but lay up, let me see, Salaki, 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 It says, lay up not your treasures on earth, but lay up your treasures in heaven. You know what I mean? Because, again, this devil is talking about you ain't going to own nothing to be happy. <laughs> if people don't realize it's the end, though, like, that's show you, that's some scary shit, too. If, if a motherfucker coming on TV talking about making statements like these proud ass statements, talk about God is dead, you know, we no longer lead him, and, and, and literally, uh, you going to own nothing and be happy. And motherfuckers don't see, like, like, these motherfuckers literally just did some on some on some cartoon type shit some cobra commander uh from from a space station <laughs> like they did, did some shit for real hey man salakia for the digression uh have a cool chapter two talks about the money's um based on um you know abadia you know the thick clay the, the, the thick clay the heavy debts this money is not real money it's a debt note and that's why the whole world is in debt right now from China to other countries. A lot of countries in the world are basically their economies are fucked up because of the fact everybody utilizes this American dollar. You know, we thought that shit would be already popping off because of the BRICS um, summit that happened last week. But they. See, they all against um, Israel, Yashar Allah, he prints power. They all against you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, similar Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. But again, like I said, I, I question that, but I already, you know, the Lord gave me the answer. Like at the end of the day, they all in cahoots, you know what I mean? They just want to be the top dog, you know, they don't give a f for that top spot. But, you know what I mean, you know. 
this money system is is, is, is a debt note. And like I said, it basically put the whole world in debt. is verse 15 because we witnessing this happen i'm gonna start at verse 13 the point is verse 15 and it reads genesis 47 and 13 and there was no bread in the land for the famine was very sore So like it. That's why um Israel had um basically had um uh, had um his sons basically go to the land of Egypt. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought and Joseph brought so like it, and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. So like it, I, I skipped Genesis 47 and verse 13. And there was no bread in all the land and there was no bread in all the land for the famine was very sore so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. Verse 14. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn, which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. Verse 15. And when money failed in the land of Egypt, Heard what that said, and today in America, Babylon the Great, aka America, this is the modern day Egypt. You go into a lot of the practices of ancient Egypt and America, they are um, synonymous. You know, the elder Yashawama from Dallas often, well, not often, but once in a while goes into, you know, the similarities between Egypt and America, and it's quite astonishing. You know, you find out about, you know, women's rights and, you know, um, you know, beer. You know, on bowling and all these different things. It says, and when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, give us bread for why should we die in thy presence for the money fell off. And these devils realize that they basically trying to be the modern day Joseph. They about to put everybody in a situation that you're going to have to depend on them for the one of bread. But those that's in the spirit and in, in the power of Yahweh Shem Shah, that the most high basically you know, has chosen, they're going to have a spirit on them with no matter what happens. They're not going to succeed to this devil. They're going to trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Even Habakkuk chapter 2 talks about that. It says, uh, his heart is not upright or his heart is lifted up. So like I can't remember, I remember I'm butchering the verse, but it says, but the just shall live by faith. And who is the just? The hopeful elect. So if you're so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole, Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, such as commandments of your power. Your true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh you will be destroyed. With that, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to call Allah, Yimala, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh, by Hashem, Rechakot, as double honor to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, who teach and do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim, across the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives. And our freedom to do so, now more so than ever. I say shalom on to the Akim and the Akwatha for listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom on to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. And the land of other nations appearing like the other nations, but subscribe to this truth to you. I say shalom. Until next time I'm able to come with another lesson. I say shalom, shalom, and my wife.